Well, today we're going to be doing something a little bit different, something a little special. We're going to be doing an empty chair. Now, the reason that we call these the empty chair is because the empty chairs in our church represent someone, a soul, that has not yet come into relationship with Jesus. So this morning, we're going to fill these two empty chairs with Rob and Donna Albert. Rob and Donna, if you guys want to come over and have a seat. Rob and Donna are an amazing couple. They have a fantastic story of how God has moved in their lives. And so this morning, I want you to be able to hear their testimony. The Word of God tells us that we overcome Satan by the blood of Jesus and by the word of our testimony. And so I'm going to be talking with them this morning so that you can hear what Jesus has done for them because what Jesus has done for them, he can also do for you. Rob and Donna, I just want to welcome you guys this morning. So glad to have you with us. And uh, just going to kind of dive in here for the sake of time and just uh, let, let the church hear a little bit about your story. So you can look at me, you can look at the camera, you can go back and forth however you're comfortable. But uh, Rob, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit, what was life like before Jesus came into, came into it? All right, so basically... Um... I really didn't know God till I was in my 30s, at least. Um, we, we had, my mom tried the best she could, I think, but I really didn't know anything about God, didn't really know anything about church. Yeah, we'd go every now and then, but didn't really know anything. Hmm. So it's been since in my 30s, and I'll tell you what, it's still a journey. Every day of my life. I'm still learning more and more and more, and I, th I thought I had a grasp on everything, but you know, um, it's just amazing the things that I've been learning every day, every hour, every event, uh, even the event through this right now. Um, a lot of people are freaking out. I'm not scared at all. Uh, I'm not worried. I'm not, I'm shaking people's hands. I gave Tanner a hug today. I'm, I, I'm not worried. Um, I've got God as my protector, and he knows my future. He knows the day I'm going to die. I hope it's not soon, but um, I just love everything. I, I love everything where he's going. It's not been easy, but um, I absolutely love where he's taking me. I have to learn how to trust him. I've failed in that a lot of ways, um, but I've got a big, big journey that I'm still going through, and uh, I'm so thankful. Uh, there it goes. Okay. It was it's blinking red. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> well, keep talking. We'll All figure right. that out. <laughs> so, so anyhow, uh, I know I still have a long journey ahead of me, and uh, I'm, I know that he's going to protect me the whole way. And if I would not have the help of the church and of my wife, I actually don't know where I would be. So, Rob, what would you say was the biggest obstacle or the biggest challenge in your life that you had to work through before Jesus was a part of it? Man, there's, it's, uh, I think the biggest part is love. I really had to learn how to love all over because... I'm not saying that I wasn't loved when I was growing up. That's not what I mean by that. There's a different love between family love and godly love and a, a marital love. Um, I didn't experience that till, uh, other than family love till I, was, till I met God, Christ. Um, and still now, I'm still learning how much he does care for us and love us. Sometimes I, I still struggle with the trust with him. And, but I will. I, I, I do trust in him. And um, it's not just family. The church family love, too. I've, oh, man, I've, I've learned so much from the body of Christ. And I just want to thank everybody for that, too. And uh, I'm learning every day. I'm learning absolutely every day. I've, I've, I've been through so many life trials that I, I, God has been by my side the entire time when I didn't even know it. Um, I've been through some things when I was a child that, that I, I can't believe 
that I've came out of. Um, and it's by definitely by him. And that's one of the things that, um, uh, leaving that one song where he left the 99 for that one, he did it for me. And, and I, I, that's, I cry every time I hear that song because he did, he left everybody else to save me because I was on the, I was definitely on a, on a track of no good, mm. no good. And he's, but every, I'm still learning every day and I'm still, still learning. That's all I can say. Awesome. Well, Donna, how about you? What, what was life like for you? Who, who were you before Jesus came into it? Okay, well, with me, um, I came from pretty humble beginnings. We were just very poor growing up, um, which a lot of good came from that. That taught me a lot. But um, right away, early in my childhood, I knew there was a God. There, I've never doubted that there was a God. That was never an issue with me. Um, I would pray as a young child. If you don't think children pray, they do because I remember being in kindergarten praying. Um, the problem with me, though, was that I didn't, though I prayed to him, with him, I didn't trust him. Um, I didn't know that at the time, but I wouldn't really apply him. I didn't know how to apply him. I just knew how to talk to him. Um, so as I grew and went into teen years and different things like that and started following friends or going the wrong way in different areas of my life because of what everybody else was doing, my life was just everyday meaningless. It was kind of, when I look back, it was just bland. It was not fruitful. And though I loved life, I've always loved life, I had such a love for life, and I was excited about my future, and I would always pray about my future. Um, I gave my life to Christ as a young child, and I have to say that I feel that because of that, he had a, a stamp on me, because I look back at so many, and I think that's with anybody, anybody who gives their life to God, he, he's there right now, and even if you're not. And because I really feel like he spared me, protected me, um, even though I would make bad decisions, but um, though I had to deal with the consequences of the bad decisions, um, he was still gracious to me throughout all of that in my life. Mm. That's a big thing. Wow. So it was evolving. Um, my trust in him was just not good. I, like I said, I would make the, the not good decisions, but not to ramble, but um, when I was in my 20s, I um, kind of just got pretty discouraged with things weren't going the way I was expecting. It was either a bad relationship or just nothing was coming. Nothing seemed like I, I didn't know, even know how to get into a future. I just was just lost, in, mm. and I would say very lost. Um, and I remember, actually, like I said, I prayed this whole time throughout my life. Um, I remember actually going to the Lord and, and, and asking him, what do I need to do to get where I need to go? Like, what is this move that you need from me? And he gave me his, a scripture that said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. So I was a lost Christian. I wasn't seeking his righteousness. I wasn't going after his kingdom. I wasn't fully kingdom-minded. I was still Donna-minded walking my life, though I believed in him. And so I believe he was telling me at this point, you have to go after my kingdom. So I started thinking, how do I go after your kingdom? And then he gave me another scripture, which said, taste of the Lord and see that he is good. And I thought, well, I am tasting you. I'm praying. But I really meditated on that word, to taste. And I thought, really take a taste? Like, you don't even have to take a whole meal. You can just take a taste. And I thought, OK, I haven't really fully tasted you. I haven't really dove in. And that became the revelation that started to turn my life around, because I actually started diving now into his word and him. And that's where the big change started coming in. That's awesome. Well. The reason that I wanted to have you guys come and share today is because I, I feel like your stories are so relatable. 
You know, we, we talk about how when we give a testimony, we want to be the person that, you know, was the drug dealer or, you know, like all this crazy big stuff. But in reality, most people don't come from those backgrounds. You know, Rob, for you, you're a normal guy who didn't meet Jesus until you were in your 30s. You just kind of lived for Rob, had some traumatic, difficult things that you had to walk through as a kid, didn't really know how to love well outside of just the people closest to you. I think a lot of people can relate to that, to be able to say, yeah, I'm kind of been there, done that. I've gone through some really rough stuff. I love those close to me, but I don't really understand what it looks like to love others or to receive love from others. And Donna, oh man, your story, grew up with this knowledge of God, grew up around God, but I love what you said. You were, you were a you were a lost Christian. In other words, you, you had all this stuff around you, but you weren't doing anything with it. And I think there's a ton of people who would say, man, I get that. I've been around God my whole life, but I've never really dove in and allowed him to really change me. So Rob, how did you get saved? How did that happen in your life? And that's, that, that's a good question. To be honest with you, um, I don't know how it came about, and I still feel like I'm still being saved every day. Okay. Um, all, for the reason is, is I screw up all the time. I'm not perfect. Um, I do the best I can. I try to love the best I can, and I, I'm still fleshy. I still get in the flesh. And I think, like I was telling you before, that, that parable that Jesus talked about, the seed on the rocky ground, the thorny ground, the good soil... I really believe in my heart, since I, since I came to Christ, I have lived every season of that parable. I do believe right now I'm in the best season I have. My soil is where it needs to be. My heart's open to where it needs to be. So I believe that I've, I had to go through those things to realize what I need to do and where I need to go. As far as when I first realized what I needed to do, I, of course, everybody knows I'm from Ohio. I'm a Browns fan. Don't hold that against me. Um, oh. I was walking past, I was helping my sister. I was walking past the altar in her church and something drove me into the altar. There was nobody around, just me. I walked past and I felt this pull to go in there. And you got to remember, I'm, I don't know what I'm doing. So I, I just, I felt go in there. I look around, there's nobody around. So I, something told me, get on my knees. I get on my knees. I, I, I didn't know how to pray. I don't know anything about that. And I, I'm still learning. So I just got on my knees and I just told God how sorry I am. And I, I don't even know who you are, but I guess I'm going to get to know you now. And, um, it kind of all started from there, and, and I've really trusted in him a whole lot. And I'm still, like I said, I'm still learning every day, every way. Um, there are times where I'm like, where are you? You know, it, I, I was looking for you. You didn't, I just, it's every day is a new, a new thing that I'm learning. And, and I, I really think it's, it's a spiritual growth thing. And of course, I do believe too, there's a lot of things that I had to get right with my life in every season. I, I really do believe that uh, there is spiritual warfare that has a lot to do with uh, my walk with God. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of things happened in my life that I'm, I'm, I, I love where I'm at now. And um, that other parable that I was talking about, that I was telling Don about, where Jesus was in the boat, and once the boat docked, the guy ran down from the mountain, and he had all those spirits in him. And all he wanted was saved to get those spirits out of him, and the only one that could do it was Jesus. And I, I have had that one too. And I'll tell you what, he has, he has lifted me through the most darkest spots in my life, and he's helped me through them. Uh, am I perfect? No, I'm, I'm not perfect by any means. And I ask for forgiveness every day because I am not perfect, but I'm trying. Yeah. My heart, my heart is pure. I, I, I've, I have love in my heart that I've never had before. And it's with her. It's with the body. It's with you. 
it's 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 a whole new thing that I'm experiencing and I and I love it and there's sometimes I don't understand it you know but I'm I'm still learning every day one of the powerful things that I think you just said was you didn't know anything about God like you didn't know what you were doing and yet the holy spirit was drawing you the holy spirit was tugging on your heart and you responded to that and I think that there's probably several people watching today who can relate to that idea that, man, I just, I don't really know anything about God. I, I'm not a Bible scholar. I don't have all the answers. I wasn't raised around this stuff, but I feel this, this sense that, that God's trying to get my attention, that God's trying to speak to my heart. Had a conversation on the phone um, the other night with a guy who got up at 5 a.m. and started listening to the Bible. And he said that when he was laying there listening to the Bible because he was feeling stress and anxiety and all this inner tension, he said that the Holy Spirit just, be, he didn't say the Holy Spirit, he said he just began to get these pictures and begin to hear God say to him that he could, what his life would look like if he began to change his um, priorities and he began to change his motivations and he began to live his life for God, how much better his life could be, how much more fulfilled he could be. And he said he got up and that whole day he was like trying to talk himself out of it that, you know, that that was just something he made up in his head. And I said, no, 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 no. That was the Holy Spirit. That was God getting your attention and saying, if you'll come and you'll let me in, I can change everything. And that's what you've done. Yeah. You've allowed God to come in, even though you didn't know him, you didn't know anything about him, and you've begun to do things God's way. Now, like you said, it's taken time. It's not been all at once. It's been a process. You've had to allow the Holy Spirit to drive out some of those spirits from your past to get that stuff out through spiritual warfare. And obedience has allowed you to draw closer and to become more and more in line with what God has for you. That's awesome. Absolutely. And also, too, I just want to throw in this little bit of a story. As a young Christian, I, I don't even call myself a Christian at that time. I, mean, I was reading a Joel Osteen book, you know, um, <laughs> but um, not that's you know, OK. It, <laughs> well, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is what had happened was when I met her, I would, like I said, I was from Ohio. She was from Iowa and I had just got uh, landed a great job. And I was only in it for a year, and I, I had lost my job prior to that. That's another story. But I finally landed a great job, and all of us, I didn't know God was speaking to me, but uh, his plans are greater than anything. And I, it was the first time I've ever trusted him, and I, I said, God, if, if you want me to move to Iowa, I'll do it. And here I am. So again, obedience. Obedience. Obedience, obedience, obedience. That's yep. awesome. So Donna, how did you make this transition from someone that was lukewarm, just kind of had your feet in the water, mm -hmm. to someone who is as passionate as you are now? Well, um, like Rob, it's an evolving thing, but I did start applying God's Word to my life. Um, I started with just obviously reading the Word, but then I, wa I started wanting to know um, okay, you, you say you're God, you say you're this, then I'm going to apply your word in these areas in my life. And I remember um, starting to tithe for the first time as a single mom. It's the scariest thing on the face of the planet for me to drop. I remember exactly, it was $40, and that was a lot of money to me. That was my sure. diaper money. And just little things like that. That's a little thing, but a big thing. But I did start applying his word Um and here's the thing. Um, when we apply his word, it, it's alive. It, and but I didn't know that then. But I, that's the faith piece where you put it out there and then you wait. And he says it'll return. But as somebody who's not applied it, it's, it's scary. Okay? Sure. So prayer is one thing. But then to apply his word. And that's what I was lacking. And obedience. So I, and, and, and obedience, he had to really deal with me on. But as I started applying the word um, and seeing his word come back and how he would take care of me on top of the prayer now, but then he had to work with me on obedience because I struggled a lot with trusting him. And I, I'm getting better um, through this last couple of years. There's been a season in my life that's helped me probably the most out of any season in my life. Um, you... I didn't trust God 
I didn't even know how bad I didn't trust him. I knew because I would go to him and, and, and there would be this debate between us. Uh, I feel he would speak to my heart. I feel he would tell me, this is the way you need to go, or discernment was rising up and he would say no, and it didn't make sense to me. So I would literally go and say, this don't make sense, God. There's no way. And I don't even understand how you're wanting this. We'd have this debate and I'd go my way. And I would really pay a price. I've suffered a lot of heartache um, with relationships, entering into the wrong relationships, or just even going off and making a business decision or whatever the decision was by not being obedient. Mm -hmm. And um, unnecessary heartache. Um, And it was through that, through the um, disobedience, actually, that started getting me to trust God. Because he was so, it's one thing to be disobedient. You fall on your face, you deal with the wound, the hurt, the heartache, and it's probably affected other people in your life too. Now you got to recover emotionally, and I'm crying out to God to help me. And he does, and he did, and it was always a process. Um, but then it was always remembering how he had told me maybe to go this way. And so through that, that's where the trust has now gotten stronger because now I'm at the point in my life where it's like, even if it don't make sense, I'm okay. I I just want to say through this whole coronavirus, um, I have to say this because uh, whatever that wave is that that we're going through right now, it's if, if you're really trusting God, He has us and and nothing else really matters and and I do feel I thank God that I'm finally in that place in my life I really am Um, every blessing that I do have is from him Hmm. and he's given it to me I didn't get any of it before him I didn't have a lot of the things I have now I came from nothing um and however he wants to use that or wherever he wants to take me with that I know it's easy to sit here and say it, uh, because I haven't lost everything, you know, but I really do believe, and I pray, I I think I'm there, I hope I am, because of all the, like I said, the disobedience brought me to this place um, of learning, that's how I've learned to trust him, was through the failures, honestly, it was all the failures. Well, I relate to that. You know, this idea of knowing about God, being around the things of God, even going to church, you know, going through some of the motions, praying, reading the Bible once in a while, being a part of Christian activities, and still not being in relationship with God. And I love what you said, that it was actually obedience that started to build your faith and trust in God. And that makes sense, because when we're obedient, we see the things of God begin to come true in our lives. We begin to see the blessings come because there are these spiritual laws. Like you said about tithing. Well, that's a big step of faith, but then you see the blessing that comes from that. And it's like, oh, okay. When I do things God's way, things turn out God's way. When I do things my way, well, they tend to go bad very, very quickly. And God's ways are so much bigger. And his word says that. We really have no idea. Yeah. And he knows the future. And he knows about that relationship that maybe you shouldn't enter into. Or, you know, we have temporary feelings sometimes. They're not always long lasting. And to trust our own feelings sometimes is not even smart, too. No. Uh, I just want to share yesterday, um, I know everybody probably witnessed the hail storm a little bit yesterday. I didn't know it was going to hail. I was at my office working, and I was listening to praise and worship, and a song just happened to come on, and it was um, in the middle of the storm. And hail hadn't happened at this point, but I was in the middle of a moment with God where I was praising him, worshiping him, worshiping him. I felt such a beautiful love that came over me and then literally the hell hit and it was uh in the middle of this praise and worship and the, it hit the roof of the office and it just was the it just, just came down so hard and I kind of stopped and I looked around and I thought there's this, this hell and I thought it just made me want to praise him even more because I thought that's where we're at right now we're in the middle of this storm and but yet 
he's still showing his glory. And then right, right, probably 30, 40 seconds later, the hell stopped, everything stopped. And I thought that's exactly where we're at right now. Mm. That, that hell is going to stop. And, but you know, he's been nothing but good through applying his word, through obedience, through prayer, and not always looking at our understanding. That's a number one thing. If I could go back, and I wish I could, I know we all do, I would love to start my life over with applying his word through obedience, and I can't imagine the heartache I would have been spared in so many areas of my life. Mm, that's good. That's so yeah. true. It's, it's just so true, yeah. All right, Rob, so last question for you today. What would you say is the biggest change that's happened in your life since Jesus came into it? Um, I'm going to say the biggest change is I'm trusting in something other than somebody else. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm trusting in a higher, a higher power. Um, I'm not relying on, on um, other people uh, to guide me in certain things. I'm going to listen to their advice. They've gone through things, of course, but ultimately God is going to have his way. And I've re I, you know, I, I haven't wanted to do things his way. Well, he's redirected me just like, you know, when you're training a dog, <laughs> you know what I mean? You get smacked, you, you know, you come back and you go around and do it again. But um, I can honestly say the, these last two years of my life has been a change in me that, that I can't believe he has taken me through and bringing me out all in the same time. Um, try, I still trust in him, you know, every day I still ask for his trust and all that stuff. So, um, I've just gone through so much and he's been there through me, but he's also been there through me through her and through our marriage and, and how, um, I really didn't know how to be a husband until God showed me how to be a husband. Mm. I, I really didn't. And, and, the, and that's through the love. And love conquers all. And like, like you guys were saying about coding scripture and all that stuff, I'm not good at that. Um, I, I, when I hear it, I remember it. Oh, yeah, I, I, I remember the words. I couldn't tell you where it's from. Sure. But that doesn't matter. My heart's still the same. You know, so I still I still trust God and and Jesus what He did. I, I'm still getting to know Him too. You know, uh, I every day I you know it's it's amazing the closer and closer that you get to Him, and uh, I just I, I I'm anxious to see what His plans are for us. Yeah. You know, for us too, not just for me because it's not just me anymore. We're 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 in unity. Sure. That three chord fold can't be broken, and with Him in the middle of it. It's, it's us three. Awesome. And, and I, I, I don't know where he's going to lead us, but as long as she's by my side and he's in the middle, I don't care. That's awesome, man. I, I love how you said that. So now others and things aren't your source. God is your source. Yeah, and, and he is. In, in, the, in the whole tithing thing that she was talking about, I, I, I didn't know nothing about tithing. Uh, I never did it until I met her. You know, now I'm asking her, hey, did you die yet? You know, where, where before I never did because sure. I didn't know anything about it. That's the protect, protection blanket that he gives you through not just the tithing, but just through everything. Yeah. And I've never had that protection before. Yeah, I've gone through some things, you know, cancer, all that stuff. I've gone through all that stuff. He's been there for me when I didn't know it. Mm. He, he, that whole thing where, where, you know, this Paul or Saul with the scales on his eyes, you know, that's how I feel. The scales have been taken away. Oh, yeah. And I can see. That's awesome. So you, uh, you talk a lot about Word of Life and about how this church has played an impact in, in your life over the last couple of years. Will you talk about that a little bit? How has, how has Word of Life and the church family here made an impact in your life? Oh, boy. Okay, so... That is, that is a really good question. Um, like I said, I've, I've experienced every seed of that parable in my life. I've experienced it. I've been to Bible studies. It's just bounced right off. You know what I mean? Because my heart, I don't think, was fully in it as much as I thought it was. So with that being said, I went to, I went to churches back in Ohio, came to Iowa, went to churches here. But when I came here, it's the love of the body that that 
I felt the most. This congregation in the body, it, like I told you when we first came here, the love that I felt, I, I, I've never experienced this anywhere in any church, and it keeps driving you back. And, and it's such a diversified group. You've got rich, you've got poor, you got what, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you have. You know, and that's what I love about this church and this congregation and, and the way you bring the word. Um, it's, it's honest. It's truthful. This is, it's, it's black and white. This is what you need to do. And so um, you got a lifelong member. Oh, oh, that's good, man. You're part of the family. We're not letting you go anywhere. <laughs> All right, Donna, last question for you today. You've talked, I mean, you've kind of been touching on this a little bit throughout your whole, your whole story, but... What is the biggest thing that has changed in your life since you've given Jesus the reins? Well, this is, I was contemplating that question when you asked it with Rob, and I could just feel this just coming up inside me so full. Freedom. Mm. I was, I'm so free right now. I'm really free. And in and, and all the ways that I'm free I, you just you, you wonder why people dance for the Lord. That's freedom. Um, you don't realize how bound you are through the curse of sin, through the consequences of sin, through the heartache of sin, because that's all it is. It's all it ever is, even the smallest sin, is a hurt. It's a pain. And if it don't hurt you, which it will, it'll hurt somebody you love. And then there's healing that needs to come from it. But that's all that sin is. So it causes me to think now every moment of my life, not that I'm perfect either, but there's a consequence behind this sin. But the freedom in me is to be me because I know it's okay, because it, I'm who he created me to be, and I'm seeking him. And to love everybody, it doesn't matter who they are, what they have, what they don't have, it doesn't matter to go over to this neighborhood, to go to that neighborhood. And it's exciting to apply his word because I have seen it come back to wait for it to come back now. So I'm super excited. There's freedom in that. There's, there's just freedom in everything that you're doing. Even there's such a freedom on our way here this morning. We were talking about, you know, what if we did lose everything? And what if this happened? And what if what if this is the very, very last days where we become to a one world currency and, and they force us to do these things? What does that mean? And I thought, well, there's freedom in that too because I'm going to say no and you can take it all. You can. It's freedom in knowing that I have eternal life with Christ and this is temporary. And whatever we're doing right down here is for his glory, it's not about me anymore, but he's so good that he blesses us along the way mm. to help and cushion that. His blessings are honestly a cushion and his love. Mm. That's all it is. It, it's not, yeah, we'll be successful down here. I believe that. I'm to be the head, not the tail, the lender, or not the borrower. I'm to be all those things. I'm claiming those things for the purpose of him, not for me. So that's the freedom. It's just beautiful. It really is. That's powerful. That's awesome. I, I, I love that idea that Jesus sets us free from us. From it, us. And, and to watch what he's done in my family, it's like one person at a time. It's, it's almost like, and now I've actually been going to him, okay, we're, we're going over here, God, right? We're going we're gonna to deal with this one right now, right? Um, but it's been beautiful. It's been the, the grace of him, the love of him. Um, you know, through your prayers, through our prayers, our family members are going to be saved through, through us just claiming those things, our words, um, just the things we speak and say every day. There, there's power in it if we just exercise it. And, and I have a family member right now that's lost that I love so much that, that says there's no God. How do you know there's a God? And I'm like, taste and see that there's a God. That's all you got to do. And he'll, he's really good at showing you that he's God. He, he's really qualified enough to do that. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Well, guys, thank you so much for being willing to come and, and share with all of us. I, I know this can be hard to get up and be exposed and transparent, but you guys did an amazing job. And I just I want to take that last thought that you gave and, and just kind of begin to talk with the church a little bit about taste and see that the Lord is good. But again, thank you guys. I love you both so much. I, I look forward to getting to know you both better and, and seeing what God has for you. I'm going to allow you, dismiss you guys from the stage, and I'm going to talk with the church. But thank you guys. Incredible job. But I, I really hope that you heard that story. You know, Rob's story of knowing nothing of God, not having been raised around this, and then God drawing him in by the Holy Spirit and him learning slowly through a process that obedience is key. And then Donna's story of being raised in around church and being raised around Christian things, but never really fully giving herself over to the things of God. And then when she did, finding freedom through obedience, finding freedom and actually applying the things of God to her life and finding that she didn't have to walk in bad consequences and in a broken heart all the time because God has a better way for her to live. Well, I'm going to have Joel come up here right now and and we're going to sing a, a final song together. But as he does that, I, I want to give you an opportunity to pray. Because I have a feeling that there's some people this morning who are watching this. And you are relating to Rob or to Donna's story. Maybe you're where Rob's at. And you've really just, God's never really been a part of your life. He was never really a part of your family. But you've gone through some stuff. Your heart's been broken. You've been drugged through the mud. You've experienced some pain. Rob has experienced cancer. He's, he's experienced some hard stuff that life threw at him. And now you're saying, but I feel the Holy Spirit is beginning to draw me. I feel that God is trying to get my attention. Maybe this coronavirus has opened your eyes up to the reality that you don't know what tomorrow holds and you're not promised um, that you're going to necessarily make it through another day. And so you're realizing you need to get right with God right now. Or maybe you're more like Donna and you're just saying, I'm tired of going through the motions. I'm tired of being around God, but not knowing God. I'm tired of hearing about all this stuff about the kingdom, but not actually living for the kingdom. I'm tired of going around the mountain. I want to start putting God's truth into work in my life so that I can have that freedom, so that I can look life in the face and say, you know what? You can take everything from me, but you will not take the thing that matters most. And that's my soul. That's my relationship with God. You cannot take that. So I want to I want to say a prayer and I just want to encourage you at home. Pray with me this morning. Or if maybe if you're not relating to those two things, maybe you're doing really well with the Lord. I want to encourage you just to begin to pray for the people that the Holy Spirit is putting on your heart to pray for right now. Because you know what? Our series right now is Tell a Friend. God wants everyone to come back into relationship with him. That's his number one priority, is to establish relationship with us through his son, Jesus. Let's pray. Father, I need you. Like Rob said this morning, I cannot do it without you. And I recognize that today. I cannot keep doing life without you and Holy Spirit, I'm recognizing your drawing. I'm recognizing that you're calling me in. You're calling me to yourself. So Lord, right now, here I am. You can have me. I thank you for taking me as I am. And I thank you for helping me to become who you created me to be. I thank you for forgiving me for my sins, for my mistakes, for cleaning me up from the brokenness that I've experienced. And I thank you for healing me from the things that I've gone through. Lord, like Donna said this morning, I don't want to just be around you. I want to be in relationship with you. I want to be close to you. I want to hear your voice. And I want your peace, your perfect peace that transcends understanding. Jesus, please help me not to just hear about your word. Help me to do your word. 
Help me to be like the wise man who builds my house upon the rock that even when the storms come, and Lord, right now we're in the middle of a storm. We don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. We're going to have some rain. We're going to have some hail. There's going to be wind and lightning. And yes, there might even be waves crashing against the house, crashing against my life. But Lord, I know that if I put your word into practice, that my, that my life will not crash. And that even if I lose everything else, I will never lose you and I will never lose my salvation and the eternal life that is promised to me. I thank you for your protection. I thank you for your blessing. I thank you for your love. Jesus, come in. I'm yours. Here I am, Lord. Take me. Take it all. Take my life. I want what you have. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship the Lord this morning.